everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, today, uh, what I'm gonna be showing you, this is going to be a monochromatic cloud pour. This is one of the classes uh, that I will be teaching at the Fluid Art Experience in Seattle, April 27th to 29th. And uh, in that class, we are gonna go over exactly how to mix these monochromatic paints. Um, and basically the science behind getting cells without using silicone. And yeah, so let's get started. The colors that I am using, our magical cell maker, Deco Art Americana Decor, Satin Enamels in pure white. And for this background color here, I have Phthalo Blue, mixed with some dioxazine purple, both from Liquitex Basics. And I also have a bit of Artist Loft white. I could use, uh, you know, any kind of white for the most part, for the most part. Not that apple barrel white stuff, stay away from that, far, far away from that. But, you know, a quality white, Liquitex is great. Amsterdam is great. Um, Artist Loft is fine. So, what I have done. I mixed the purple and the blue together just to get, um, I wanted like a really strong indigo kind of color. And so that's what I have going here. Looks like a fresh pair of jeans. And then, to each of these cups, I added about a tablespoon of satin enamel. Roundabout. It's an eyeball, an eyeball tablespoon, maybe a little bit more. Um, so a tablespoon of the satin enamel to each of these cups. And then I add a tablespoon of paint, other paint. So to this one, I added just this straight blue purple mix. I'm just gonna call it indigo for uh, speed sake. So there was a tablespoon of satin enamel and a tablespoon of the indigo. And then this one is a tablespoon of the satin enamel and about a half a tablespoon of white and a half a tablespoon of the indigo. And this was mostly just the satin enamel white and the other white with just a couple of drops of the indigo. And so that gives me this monochromatic color palette that is going to give me these magical 3D cells. So, these paints have been mixed. One part paint to two parts Floetrol. Uh, and then that mixture is thinned with my concoction of 90% water, 10% Floetrol. You can just use plain water. Um, this, this just kind of helps to keep you from accidentally over thinning. Um, you don't have to do that mixture. I just tend to do that. It's, you know, just one of those things, a little safety measure, but uh, definitely not a necessity. So I add that until I get the consistency that I, I'm looking for, which is, this is about a two on my consistency scale. Hopefully you can see it is making a mound, but it does disappear pretty quickly. There's a nice, thin, even stream coming off of my stick. If it's getting thin and then thick or it looks kind of lumpy, you need to keep mixing. But this is what you're looking for. So the first thing I like to do is put some of my background color in my cup just to make sure I have enough. I will definitely have enough. I'm going to have some of this paint left over, which is fine. So, I'm going to lay down a base coat. 
and you'll notice that my sides are already covered. I do that because the way that I mix my paint for a straight pour, which this is basically a straight pour using scent enamel paints, um, I just realized that I did not spray the back of this canvas and I can tell by the way the putty knife went across it. Okay, well, that's a thing. It happens. So uh, I mix a straight pour, rather thin, and sometimes the flow trawl doesn't really give um, the best coverage on the sides. And so, I find it best to just cover the sides ahead of time, and then I never have to worry about it again. All right, let's put some paint in our cup. Remember to check the consistency before putting the paint in the cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. I'm going to pour from up high allowing these paints to sink and churn. That is what gives you that awesome blending of those paints and that boulder cell action where it looks very 3D. Again, from up high going from the darkest color to the lightest color. Okay. And adding just that drop that little drop of blue to this lightest color. If this were just the white white, you know, if you've ever tried to find the right white for a room in your house, you know, it can be a tricky thing. Um, it just makes it the perfect shade of white. It's naturally not white. If you were to put that on something white, you would see that yeah, maybe that's not a great example because this is more yellow. But you would see that that is a slightly light, very, very, very light shade of blue. Like super light shade of blue. Okay, coming over top with a bit more of my background color. This will give all of those paint paints a chance to react. Because what's happening here? We're going to have the hydrophobic effect. And that is the matte paints, i.e. the satin and owl. Put the pop of any other bubbles that have come up. But that satin and owl paint, it has a hydrophobic effect. It is matte. Matte paints will push away a glossier paint and these will keep growing. So this is going to be more than enough paint for this canvas. And I'm actually going to pour, I think, in slow circles. Why? I don't know. Just because. And of course, you know, I gotta get my Fibonacci in there somehow. No spinner today because we will not be using spinner in class. Okay. So this is the part where patience is a virtue. We let it sit. We let this paint puddle percolate. That is definitely enough paint. Popping the bubbles. 
And what's going to happen, these bubbles that are sitting underneath of this blue, as I pop those bubbles, it's going to bring some of that other paint with it. Other paint being these satin enamels. And so as they pop up, because it has a hydrophobic effect, it's going to grow. It's going to expand. And if I allow it to pop up and expand before I tilt, I will get bigger cells. I will get more 3D looking cells. Because if I tilted this now, I would still get cells. But I wouldn't be able to stretch them. And so just whatever happens, happens. But this, you can see as they pop up, they start to expand. And the more I allow that to happen before I tilt, the bigger the cells will be once I stretch them. So you can see all of these little tiny cells that popped up, now they're spreading, they're growing, they're pushing that background paint away because it is hydrophobic. The matte paints are pushing the gloss away. When you think about it, like from a makeup standpoint, you know, when you put on something that is mattifying, mattifying primer or something it's pushing the shine away and that's kind of what's happening here Just making sure that the weight of my paint is centered as possible. Aha, that explains why it's not sitting level because I had it sitting the wrong way. Satchmo has the zoomies. He's a silly boy. Okay, so now you can see this whole area is just filling up with cells. And because I allowed these to develop first, some of these cells look like they're going to be really cool looking. So I want to try to keep that if I can. We'll see how it goes. More popping bubbles. Every time I pop these bubbles, it's bringing paint with it that are creating cells. All right. Well, I think I can give this a tilt now. Um, hmm. Okay. I am going to go this way first.
and I'm going to bring the weight of the paint back to center before I change directions. And I think I'm actually just going to come straight across to this other corner. And if you are mindful of the weight of your paint, you can really control your tilt. The tilt, you know, that's where a lot of people mess it up. They say, I get cells and then I tilt it and they're gone. Well, probably you're squishing them up because you're not stretching it properly. So now the weight of my paint is back in the center. The weight of the paint is going to be where the paint is moving the fastest. And so you'll see, I'll be able to tilt this off almost into a corner because my weight is all the way on this side here now. And again, back to the center. And again, bringing the weight of the paint back. So as far as like a design, like where does the eye want to rest? What, what is the focal point generally in these paintings? It's going to be what was the center, so it would be this area. And unless it is perfectly symmetrical, I don't want my focal point to be dead center. Um, or like my spirals, you know, that is an obvious center. So what I like to do is I like to look at the rule of thirds. If you don't know what that is, you want to probably take a look at that. And I'm going to push my focal point into one of those quadrants. Is it a quadrant? If it's mine? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Getting super cool cells here. Um, yep, I will bring in for a close up. Back in a few. Okay, here it is in all of its glowing glory. I absolutely love these monochromatic cloud pours. I love the glow effect that you get from it these cells these are unusual don't typically get those um very cool not mad at that at all never a dull moment right but this is one of the things that i'll be teaching at fluid art experience in seattle april 27th to 29th uh, do check out the description box below for the links to all of the other artists who are taking part in this train. Cos Creations is up next, but uh, for all of the, the folks who are going before and after me, you can find that in the description box below. And uh, also lots of other pertinent information um, about how to find me and my stuff on the interwebs. In that description box but i gotta keep it short because we're on a train today and i know i'm gonna have to cut some stuff out from the other parts so uh yeah that's it for me for today i hope you have a beautiful day now go make smart after you watch the rest of this train